Hello and welcome into the KE Report. I'm your host, Shad Markwitz, and I'm speaking today with T.G. Watkins, Director of Stocks at Simpler Trading. And T.G., it's always great to get you on the show to get your technical thoughts on the markets or different companies that you're watching. And the last time we had talked, I believe you were looking at some more weakness still being in the markets. You were looking at rallies as potentially places to short the markets. And you were trying to figure out, is there another leg down in this market that we still have to go? Or are we going to have a basing pattern where some of the indicators that you follow would show there's a re- rebound? How are you looking at the setup today in the general market indexes? Yeah, same basic idea. Everything has been working out that way. In fact, uh, you know, we just had a double top last week on the S&P as it hit the underside of the daily 50 and the hourly 200. So, you know, we were just looking for that bounce to run into resistance and it totally confirmed it. Double top and then also Thursday, Friday, we had news that kind of helped push the market in the direction that we needed, which is down. That was the hot CPI number on Thursday and then also the uh, Russia news about Ukraine and all that kind of stuff on Friday. And then also Jim Bullard talking about needing a a 1% interest rate as opposed to like 25 basis points. So yeah, there's just a lot of negativity out there, a lot of stuff happening and quantitative tightening. Again, some of the Fed chairmen were talking about needing to pull money out of the market faster than slower. So there's a lot of that going on. So I think a lot of things are just going to have to get reevaluated and repriced. Yeah, there's no shortage of things making the markets wobble right now, especially the Fed policy with not just the tapering ending, and the rate hike starting, but as you mentioned, reducing the balance sheet as, as another wild card that the market really wasn't anticipating even a few months ago. So that's putting some pressure on it, as is the geopolitics. But when you talk about shorting the markets, a lot of investors struggle with that side of it, TG. That, you know, they're, they're fine going long in a position or buying. But when you're doing shorting of markets, are you shorting using inverse ETFs? Are you using options? What is your approach to shorting the markets, and, and how would people that are uncomfortable with that concept, learn a little bit more about it. Well, so there are, there are a few different ways to do it, and it depends on your broker, depends on what you're comfortable with as far as your skill level, and it also depends on if you're using a brokerage or, say, an IRA, Roth IRA. Now, I did actually just teach a class. You know, We had that uh, webinar a few weeks ago talking about the market update and all this. I actually just finished teaching a five-hour class Saturday, two days ago, about how to short the market. It was great. We had a good time in it, and uh, people really appreciated that since that's kind of where we're at right now. So if you guys are interested, I'm just going to plug it. It it is at simplertrading.com. You can go to our classes, and we're going to be having that up there on the evergreen portion of it uh, pretty soon. So we're we're do, doing with that as far as your brokerage, if it or your broker if it's a, if it's allowed or if the stock is able to be borrowed, you can short it directly. So you can just do that, just like you normally trade a stock, just short it instead of buying it. You can do you can sell calls, you can buy puts, you can do all sorts of strategies like that if you're comfortable with options. Or you can do inverse ETFs, which you know, like if you need to do the S and P going down, you just do the S P X S. You can get linear or you can get leveraged. And the other thing about that is inside of an IRA, you can't short a stock. It's just not allowed. But what you can do is sell calls, buy puts, buy inverse ETFs. And so depending on what your, where your money's at, there are a few different ways to tackle this. Just one more question on the inverse ETFs, because I think some people, that's where they start if they're not comfortable with options. For example, they may be comfortable shorting the S&P or shorting oil or shorting the dollar, you know, different things using inverse ETFs. But there are the leveraged ones, the two times and the three times, and then there are just the regular ones. There's more decay with some of those leveraged ones over time. What is your thoughts on that? Or do you use them as very short-term trading vehicles? You get in and out, or, or, or would you recommend people, if they're going to hold for a longer period of time, not use the leveraged ones? What's your thoughts on the inverse ETFs? Well, I'm totally fine using the leveraged ones. In fact, that's all I do because I am looking for extra oomph, you know, or leverage with this stuff. And I don't, I really don't usually hold on to a position, honestly, more than 30 days. It just kind of depends on what the market's doing. And so that decay or the extra cost or anything else like that, it just doesn't matter to me for my timeline. Now, you know, I wouldn't necessarily recommend hanging on to it for something like maybe four or five, six months. You'd have to figure out how much that's going to eat into your profit if you are correct. But yeah, it, it's designed to be relatively short-term buying and selling of it. That might be relative, so kind of you know, look into it, look into the specs and see what it's going to cost you. But uh, for, for the moves and for the leverage, yeah, it's great. I mean, usually when the market does a move, you know, it's, it's an opportunity and then you move on to the next opportunity. 
Well, speaking of which, I know that you're always evaluating different stocks, different sectors, looking at what's moving. What's really catching your eye right now? Is there any trade you've done recently that have worked out well? Is there anything you think is setting up for a good setup? What's the lay of the land on some of the stocks you're following? Well, right this moment, since we did have a pretty strong down move on Thursday and Friday, I do think things are a little oversold, so I wouldn't be surprised to be seeing some chop or a little bit of bounce to the upside. But again, since we're in a correction or a bearish type scenario, you know, bounces should be looked at as getting shorted. So don't go short after a big move. You need to wait for some opportunity, just like a bounce or a flag into resistance, and then you can go short that. So I am looking at kind of some of the semis. I think that they're going to be kind of the next to go because of the interest rates. You know, tech in general is probably going to be weak like that. Um, I do think that oil is probably due for a pullback, but I wouldn't be shorting it. I'm just saying that I, I think it's kind of done its run to the upside for now. And then there are th some funny names out there. You think about a Sleep Number or Tempur-Pedic, you know, a couple bed companies, and you look at where they are and you're like, wow, those are really, really high. Why the heck are they still up as high or you know, have relative strength compared to Apple and Tesla considering what the market's doing? And obviously I think that was because of the the stimulus that we had and then the really, really strong housing market. But I think all that's going to be turning around. I don't see that these names really deserve to be up as high as they are right now. And so I'm going to be tackling some of those. There are a few other names that we're working at, looking at things that's like that makes no sense that they're still as high as they are. And you know, if you guys are interested, again, over at my trading room, this is where we get all these ideas and put them out there. And then, you know, I'm trying to think about some of the travel stocks. You know, I know COVID is kind of winding down, so they, they can be a little bit challenging. We did see a, a spurt last week in the cruise lines and the airlines, mostly because I think we've been seeing mask mandates coming down and, so, and some travel restrictions and all that. And so that might actually be an area, but again, despite the good news there, if the market's going to be moving down, they're just not going to go anyplace. So we do need to be really good at picking the kind of stocks that we're going to be going after right now. Yes, an interesting point, TG. A lot of people were calling that the reopening trade 2.0 because we already had a reopening <laughs> trade that got canceled. At yeah, we've been waiting for the reopening trade for how long? Yeah, yeah. so the, the, the airlines, the rental cars, hotel company, a lot of, uh, a lot of people are, are just a pent-up demand for travel. But I often think that's counterbalanced with these higher energy prices that are causing tickets to go higher for airlines, uh, causing people to be less likely to drive and do driving trips and rental cars. So it's kind of a, a teeter-totter there with the reopening trade and the high energy prices. Do you think with some of the other areas that are already smashed down pretty big, like some of the growth stocks, some of the second tier tech, uh, some of the things that may have been EV related or trips to Mars and spaceships, all these different startups and IPOs that we saw hit the market, the Kathy Woods, ARK Innovation Funds. Do you think that any of those are at levels where they're so beat up that they may be poised for a bounce or is there still too much weakness on the horizon when you look at it? The, the quick and easy answer to that is no. Prices can always go lower. That is something that new traders need to really understand is that when something is oversold, it can keep getting more oversold. I mean, look at PayPal, look at Square. They just have been going down Carvana. I mean, these things have just been melting down. And while they, they might start slowing down on the descent, that doesn't mean that they're good places to buy or that you should throw your money at it yet. They have not actually turned around and gone in an uptrend. The other thing to kind of look at is look at Baba and Baidu. They've been going down for years. And while they might be putting in bases right now, they still have not started a new uptrend. So I really, really strongly make sure that people understand that just because something is so low or in, and so cheap does not necessarily mean that it is at a good place to buy because, you know, I guess, best worst case scenario, you get Baba or Baidu. Uh, yes, they have stopped going down but now they've just been going sideways for another year. And if you're looking for something to make new highs, it's not doing that. Now, if you're a trader and you're gonna be doing sh uh, swing trading, short-term trading, fine, you can trade those ups and downs. But if you think you're gonna be buying something like a BABA uh, because it's at a low and it's gonna start going up, it may not. It could go sideways for a year. And now you've just wasted your, t your time and your money on that one. So be very, very careful about these things. You gotta wait until there's a new uptrend on them. Man, I think that is such great advice, TG, and that's kind of why I asked it, because there's so many people that think, hey, it's, it's oversold, I should buy in. That doesn't mean it can't keep going down, and a lot of people are making an analogy to this time, 
to the 2000 dot com bubble where a lot of people thought those stocks would came back and a lot of them never came back. They just went down into uh, oblivion. So when you're looking at a chance to get into a stock, when you do think things have turned, are you looking at it more where one of your indicators, like your Moxie indicator, shows you that or, or it's a trampoline move, one of those kind of things? Or are you looking at it to just start getting positive momentum going to the upside where it's breaking resistance levels up above it. What are some of the key things you look at when you think, okay, maybe there is a, a turn here and maybe it is time to go long game. What do you look for? Well, of course, you know, the Moxie indicator and my typical Moxie ru rules that I teach as far as to how to buy and, and use all of those rules in order to figure out when that the right time is, but also the market condition. I mean, the market, it has been, you know, essentially flagging for the last oh, two weeks or so. But it, I think it's been bear flagging, which tells me it's a matter of time until the price goes lower, which means that if you think you're looking to go long on something, be careful, it could get run over by the market no matter how good the setup looks. So the current market environment is extremely important to the effect of your particular stock. The other simple thing is, well, is it over or below key moving averages on the larger time frames? You know, if you're looking at something, like if I'm, I'm looking at Baidu right now and I see it on the daily chart, it has oscillated through the daily 50 a couple times over the last year or so, but it has never held it and has not actually started another trend. Another thing to look at is that on the daily chart, the 50 is still below the 200. When the fast moving average is still below the slow moving average, that's technically a downtrend. Even though that there are up moves, the trend is still down. I look at the weekly chart all the moving averages are still down. You know, It's been going sideways for a year or more, but there has not been a new uptrend. This thing is not in a bullish trend. And that is the thing that you need to realize when you're looking at particular stocks, is there can be little moves and trends and bumps and, and whatever thing, trends that you can uh, catch along the way, but the overall trend is not there yet. And it's not going to be there for a while. And so you just need to be patient and wait until everything starts to line up. Key points to think about there, uh, the, how does the trend in the general markets and how is that affecting all of the boats on the tide? But then also you want to see those shorter term moving averages breaking up above the longer term ones and you want to see the stock price itself breaking out above those moving averages. So definitely some good thoughts for traders to consider. If people like getting TG's thoughts, definitely check out the link we post below this over at Simpler Trading and you can get his thoughts on the markets, the stocks he's following, and some of those classes he outlined like that five-hour class on shorting the market. So always appreciate you spending some time with us here at the KE Report TG and looking forward to our next chat. Yep, thanks again. Talk to you guys later.